Amen. Well, it's good to be here tonight, isn't it? Amen. Glad I'm here. Glad you're here. Glad the Lord's here. Amen. 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 Yes, if the Lord wasn't here, it wouldn't be no use in us being here. Right. But He's here tonight, and I'm glad you're here tonight. Praise the Lord. Boy, don't you look at this crowd here on Friday night, preacher. Isn't that a blessing? Some of you really got out and worked hard. And uh, I was telling the pastor how fast it seems like this week's went by. I don't know when I've enjoyed a week of revival any more than I've enjoyed this week. I mean, it's just been good every night. And, and, and the Lord seemed like God's done something special for us each night. And uh, some of you have missed it, so you're going to have to cram five nights into one night. And uh, I, I promise I'm going to try to be done by, by 12 o'clock. Uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. But uh, seriously, we're glad that you're here this evening. And we're really glad to be in church. Uh, especially all these young people. If you're here tonight and you are under 21, would you stand, please? If you're under 21... I want you to look at that. Isn't that much? Yes, man. Oh, we need to pray for these backslid old people. We need to have an old people revival, don't we? These young people, though, the problem with them is they have a big grown body and a little tiny brain that's years behind. That's true. They're all blondes. They are. And boys, all of them. Uh, that's a bad shape to be in when you've got a grown body and a little tiny brain. You're in trouble. You are in trouble. You better hope, you better listen to the preacher and your mom and daddy until you get enough sense to do what you're supposed to. <laughs> Ain't that right? That is right. And so many people in here wish they'd listen to their preacher and their mom and their daddy when they didn't have no sense and their mom and daddy did. And you'll be surprised how much your parents are going to learn in the next few years. Uh, 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 you, you'll be shocked. Okay. Uh, Blondes went in, went in this place of business. She walked up to the counter and said, uh, I'd like a cheeseburger. And the lady said, Shh, man, this is a public library. <laughs> she said, oh, I'm sorry, can I have a cheeseburger? <laughs> That's the kind of people we got to deal with. <laughs> There's two, two of them walking down the road the other day. And one of them said, look at that dog with one eye. The other went. <laughs> These are the kind of people we have to work with in our youth group. I heard one the other day, she was out there, and I, she got up, and she was weed eating, and she hit her cat. And when that weed eater hit her cat, it cut its tail off, and it's flopping around, blood all over the place and everything. And she, she grabbed it and put it in a bag, tied it up there, and took it to Walmart. Because she heard they was the world's greatest retailer. <laughs> but those are the kind of people we have to work with. Uh, but anyway, anyway, God be the glory, He's able to do anything. I'm glad, hey, I'm glad God can help crazy people. Ain't you? We better be. We better be. That's right. Uh, he's done a lot for me, and I thank him, praise him for it. We have enjoyed, my uh, wife and I have enjoyed this week tremendously. It's been just great, and I praise God for this church and what, what you're doing. And uh, my goodness, that choir is full tonight. What a blessing. You ought to be so thankful for that. I know, I know churches that can't even have revival no more. People won't even come. And so God's doing something here, and you ought to thank God for it. Get in on it. Don't let this be the only night you come. Be here Sunday morning. Be here Sunday morning. And hear the Word of God. Get in this thing. And the Lord will bless you. Also, I'd like to remind you now about the youth rally. Several folks have asked about it. Uh, look, y'all, I hope that a bunch of you will come down on that Saturday evening, April 25th. I'll be bringing a brand new special message that night. Actually, we're going to start at 6 o'clock on that day so you can get home early. So uh, we'd love for you to come and uh, be a part of our, what we call our giant spring youth rally. That's back there on the, the board. We've got some more flyers over here. Now tonight, it's going to be a lot different than what I've done. We've had a great time every night. Tonight, I want you to take your Bible, turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 13. The book of the Revelation. The re Revelation means the unveiling or the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It is the Word of God. I'm so thankful that God did not leave us down in this world, wicked as it is, without His Word. Ain't you glad for your Bible tonight? Thank God for the Bible. Hallelujah. Not only, I'm glad we got a book we can believe in and depend on. Amen. Thank God for the Bible. Praise the Lord. Well, you know the world, well, you know it's right. The world hates it so much. Amen. Old Voltaire, many, many years ago, held, held the Bible and he said, in a hundred years, this will be an outmoded and forgotten book only to be found in museums. When the hundred years were up, Voltaire's house was only used by Geneva Bible Society to put out copies of the Word of God. Amen. Ingersoll, the famous atheist, Bob Ingersoll, Robert Ingersoll, who used to stand and give speeches against God and the Bible, held up the Bible one day and said, in 15 years, I'll have this book in the morgue. In 15 years, Ingersoll was in the morgue. And the Bible was doing just fine. Old Hume, the great free thinker, said, I think I see the end of the twilight of Christianity. And the Auxiliary Bible Society of Edinburgh had their first meeting in the room that that old boy died and went to hell from. You don't underestimate God's Word. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if that book says it, you can take it to the bank. That book says he's already preached. Whatever that thing says is right. If you ask me what I believe, I point you to that book right there. Amen. I believe everything in it. I don't understand all of it. If you meet a man who says he understands everything in the Bible, you better get away from him just as fast as you can. Amen. Now, old fella said, if I understood everything in the Bible, I know somebody wrote it and didn't have no more sense than I do. <laughs> and, and he got it all. But what part I don't understand, I believe, because I know enough of it's right, but the part I do understand. Amen? Amen. I mean, you're not going to find a mistake in that book. You're not going to find uh, you're not going to find a mistake in the Bible. You can forget it. Right. Hey, too many people done try. Amen. That's right, brother. Uh, um, Al Gore will get a will uh, get put him on a camouflage suit and get him a 12 gauge shotgun and go down the road with an old beat up pickup truck, spit the tobacco juice, and shoot the last spotted owl before you can find a mistake in the Word of God. It ain't going to happen. Amen? Oh, Hillary will, will speak in tongues and shout the victory before they'll find a mistake in the Word of God. Say amen. 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 Ain't going to happen. That's right, brother. I'm telling you, brother, uh, Stevie Wonder will pass an eye to him with 2020 before they'll find a mistake in the Bible. Ain't going to happen. Say amen. amen. That's God's book right there. Amen? That's right. Bill O'Reilly will flunk General Matt. Uh, before they before they find a mistake in the Word of God. Amen. Kanye West will be polite to a black girl before they find a mistake in the Word of God. All God's people say it. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. And you ain't going to find no mistake in this book. Brother, Lady Doo will teach Sunday school class uh, before they'll find a mistake in that book right there. There ain't no mistakes in that book right there. Thank God thy word is forever. Tell them and tell them the Lord. I'm telling you, it was good enough for our mamas and our grandmamas and our papa holes. Bless God, it's good enough for me and you in 2015. Amen. Oh, Justin Bieber will have to get him a job at McDonald's to make ends meet uh, when they find uh, uh, a mistake in the Word of God. Amen. Charlie Sheen will pass the drug test uh, when they find a mistake in the Word of God. Oh, Prince William will go up to Danville and get married by the Justice of the Peace uh, when they find a mistake. That book right there that ain't going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right, brother. Joey Bihar will vote for Sarah Palin before they find a mistake <laughs> in the Word of God. Amen. Uh, Kim Kardashian will go out without makeup all, brother, uh, before they find a mistake in that book. That's right. Casey Anthony will open up a daycare, and Nancy Grace will put her kids in there uh, before they'll find uh, uh, a mistake in the Word of God. Hey, buddy, they'll have a snowball in hell, snowball fight in hell before they'll find a mistake in that book. Ain't going to find it. Thank God for the Bible. 
Now the book you're looking at this, this evening is the 66th book of the Bible. It's in the book of Revelation. It's the book of the unveiling. Nothing from chapter 4 verse 1 has ever happened. If you want to know where we are in the book of Revelation, yes, your pastor, he's a lot smarter than I am. We are in chapter 3 in what we call the Laodicean church age. The word Laodicea means rights of the people. That means that uh, all you have is we want our rights, we want our right. you owe me something, give me what's coming to me. And then the chapter 4 verse on, there's the rapture, the great tribulation, and the second advent. The scripture that I'm going to read you tonight, Revelation 13, is during the great tribulation. This is when the Antichrist rises, and he's going to he's going to uh, show us uh, what's going to take place during the great tribulation. Let's look at it. And the beast, verse two, a beast in the, in the book of Revelation represents a king or and a kingdom, which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, represented by the devil in this scripture, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And verse 3, the bottom of it said, All the world wondered after the beast. You want to see devil worship? Look at verse 4. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. That's Satan worship in the last days. Now look at verse number 13. Revelation 13, 13. Watch out for the 13s. 85% that somebody said of the 13s in the Bible are negative. So like 10% are good, 5, five are neutral, 10 are good. The number 13 always stands for rebellion. Or rebellion against things of God. The first time the number 13 is mentioned is in the book of Genesis. And it said 12 years they served Chedar Laomer. And the 13th year they rebelled. That's what we call the law of first mention. And many times what it's something mentioned first time in the Bible. It follows it all the way through. Like the word beard. The word beer, first time the word beer is mentioned. I guarantee you, nobody, it's probably in a, a convenience store in, in this county knows where the word beer comes from or what it means. It means a well. Somebody said, I can drink a well, right? And that's what it said there in the book of Genesis and uh, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. So tonight, we'll look here at Revelation 13 and look what the beast does. He has power to give life to an image in verse 15. He does great wonders. He makes fire come down from heaven. Verse 13. And in verse 16, he calls it all. Small and great. Rich and poor. Free and bond. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. <coughs> Let him that hath to understand it count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, that's sixty and six. Six hundred and sixty six. I'm sure your pastor has preached that and taught that. To receive the mark in the right hand or in the forehead. It's so interesting and significant that the Bible says in the hand or the forehead. All these years preachers preach, they're going to stamp a mark on you. It didn't say it's on you, it said it's in your hand. And now we're hearing it. Every day they are saying about the, this fall, the end of 2015, Target, many, Walmart, many of our major stores are going to be converting over to a credit card that has a computer chip in the credit card to do business with. They're already doing it, trying it in a lot of places. And in Florida, they're already putting microchips in people's hands who are Alzheimer's patients. Because many times they'll just wander off, you know, and, and you can't find them, and they think, well, this is a wonderful thing. And the next thing you know, they'll say, this is the way to keep your kids from being abducted. 
Sounds like a great idea, don't it? Don't it just sound like the most wonderful thing? Get rid of cash. Put these crooks out of business. Stop drug dealing, prostitution, all this cash. So we get rid of cash and start doing everything by card. Somebody steals your card. Or you lose it. We'll fix it where nobody won't steal it. And we'll fix it where nobody can't steal it from you or you can't lose it. We'll put it in you. I used to wonder how, how come when I first started preaching, I thought, that's weird. I wonder why it says in your right hand or in your forehead. Why would you like give you a choice? And I got to thinking, I thought, well, uh, some people don't even have a right hand. They got blew off in the, in the war or something like that, but everybody I've ever seen had a forehead. <laughs> Get your forehead blown off, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, uh, but, uh, but you know, God fixed that so that it's in the right hand or in the forehead. Now what I'm going to show you tonight is a video clip. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm letting you see tonight how close we are to a one world government, the mark of the beast, the antichrist. I'm going to tell you, this man of God right over here, tell you the same thing. The only thing holding this stuff back right now is the church is still here. We're still here. And soon and very soon, we're going to hear a trumpet sound. And boy, they'll go. It might go. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. The old folks, you say, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And the Lord's going to say, Brother Danny, come up here. And boy, I'm leaving this world. And when the restraint's gone and the church is gone, uh, then all you know what is going to break loose. Now tonight, I'm going to just run this through from where you're tonight and show it to you. And I hope and pray by the grace of God, everybody in here is saved. And if you don't know you're saved, you better be finding out really, really quick, my friend. Because one of these days, it's going to happen. It's going to take place, and you're going to be left behind. I'm going into this yellow mic now, brother. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use it and for some volume. And I want you to look, and you're going to see the, how the devil is using his plan and tactic. Let me just say it on the last please. And, uh, and in order to, uh, to, to form what we call a one-world government. And uh, the one world government, the, the way the devil is getting our young people in, is through sports, heroes, and music. The biggest tool that Satan has tonight would be music. You know it, and I know it. And so, I'll show you, let the facts speak for themselves. I'm not giving you my opinion tonight. I'm going to let you just see some things that are going on, and uh, and I want you to uh, uh, watch it and hear it with me this evening. Okay? Now, uh, look here. We're gonna when a, when a, when, a, when an athlete gets to the top and he gets rich, he's approached by what we call secret societies. And all the kids, you've heard of the Illuminati. Illuminati simply means illuminate the enlightened ones, like we're smarter and better than everybody else. They are the elite that are calling the shots and making decisions for the rest of the world that mean you have to go by. The prices of gas, uh, po them politicians, they ain't really making the decisions. They're just little pawns in the big scheme, brother. Me and you are just, uh, we're just little nobodies running around down here. And as soon as God takes us out of here, then you're going to see this thing come to pass. What I'm going to let you see is the Illuminati symbol. This right here. That does not mean a three-pointer. You see the three sixes? <coughs> and then the one eye. That's a sign of the Antichrist. The one-eyed Cyclops. That devil that lived in the center of the earth. Of, 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 uh, of uh, people's uh, uh, tails down through the years. And 
and uh, novels and things like that with one big eye right here. Or the bad right eye. As the Bible says in, in the book of Zechariah about the Antichrist, him in the prophecy. Now tonight, uh, go ahead brother, let's get the lights. And I want you to watch this. I'm just going to let it run through. We can have hours and hours of study over this. But let's just go through it tonight and you watch it. I was sitting in the God of this world. I blinded the mind. It's resting my right feet. That's Alistair Crowley. He was the most wicked man that the, the world's ever seen. They wear his shirt. Do what thou wilt. Was Alistair Crowley's favorite saying. Do whatever you want to. There he is on the Beatles. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. Alistair Crowley. The man they call the Beast with the number 666. The baffinet or the goat's head found on the front of the shirt. There's a conspiracy going on, young people, for the lives and hearts of our youth in this country. I lie. You see him there on the shirt of the athletes, such like LeBron James. They don't even realize it. Many of these people don't even realize what they're into. But the goat's head, the baffinet, is a symbol of Satanism and devil worship. You see them with the sign there, the false peace sign. They, you see them with the goat's head over and over and over. And what they're trying to do is condition your mind to where you just think it's normal. When somebody does that, you think it's normal, don't you? You think, oh, that's just a cool sign. But it's actually the sign of the Illuminati, just like that is, over the one eye. The Antichrist is going to have a bad right eye. This explains the all-seeing eye. Notice, nine times out of ten, it's the right eye that's covered up. There's a plot going on. There's a battle going on for your soul, kids. Are you listening to me tonight? There's a devil pulling you one way. There's God pulling you the other way. And the devil has one power and God has another power. The devil wants you to go to hell and God wants you to go to heaven. And you've got to decide and vote over which way your soul goes when you leave this world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Satan and his power getting you ready for the end. What's going on on this planet? See the 666? See the 666? Over the bad right eye. They don't even realize, many of them. Some of them do know what they're into. Some of them deliberately will say it. Most of them do not. I'm telling you tonight. There's a conspiracy going on for your soul. As a mom, as a dad, as a young person, as a teenager, they don't even realize. Many of them are controlled by a spirit that they don't even realize what it is. They get on stage and their eyes roll back in their head. Somebody asked the rappers, they said, how do you write your song? They said, the voice is in my head. I just go into a trance, and then words come to me. See, this ain't no game. There was no such thing as this 50 years ago. There was no such thing as this even 40 or even 30 years ago. Right now, before the trumpet sounds. Look at the performers. Look at them. Most of these people don't even know each other. They're all a part of a big scheme in order to drag boys and girls. Just like God uses his men, Satan is using his men, such as Anton LaVey. You see the sign there of the Satanic Church. See that sign there? 
I can show you on a satanic album where that means three fingers down, denying the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, two fingers up to represent the devil's horns. I can show it to you. Individuality and self-preservation. It's about uh, you know being your own god. Madeline Manson. Manson says, "I'm my own god." He said, "This doesn't sound a god." But I am God. That's what the devil wants you to believe. He said, "I'm starting to feel like a rap god." A rap god. Because the devil pumps them up and gives them money and gives them power and gives them drugs and they start thinking, I'm God. That's a perfect example, Brother Scott. I know you've preached the scripture many times, deceiving and being deceived. The whole time they're deceiving you, the devil's deceiving them. It's like when the drug dealer comes out and you say, hey, crazy old, crazy old girl, I sell her drugs and I get rich off you. And the devil, he's using him to deceive her. The whole time the devil's deceiving that fool there. And he's going to wind up hell with him one of these days. Listen, people, this ain't no game we're playing. We don't go to church because we're bored and ain't got nothing else to do. The church is your hope. The church is the only way out of this mess. The church of Jesus Christ is going to lead this world. I got news for y'all tonight. There ain't no politician going to get us out of the mess we're in. I don't care who we vote in. This world's going down. But thanks be unto God. I know in whom I have believed. And he's the one. He's coming one of these days. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't shut up. I'm, going to, I'm too dignified to shout like that. I'm going to tell you something. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I know him. Amen. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Amen. I'm glad I know what's going on. Watch it tonight. The gospel of hip hop. Watch as he finds something in his life. Oh, 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 you will hear this word now because it's time for you to hear this word now. You are the light of your world. You are being called to help others because you have the power to help others. Others don't have the abilities that you have just as you don't have the abilities they have. Your ability is God. Your ability is God. He said, you have light, Illuminati. You're a liar. You know more than other people. And you have ability to help others, and your ability is God. That's what the hip-hop Bible, and he believes God told him that. Your ability is God. You know who he's quoting? Hey, back there in the Garden of Eden, what the devil say to Eve? You shall be as gods. You know him good and evil. Boy, wrong, people. He's wrong. Your ability is God. Come uh -huh. on. Now, now, look at that. Jesus saves a dollar bill on the cross, making a mockery of the Lord Jesus control. Christ. We are in control because basically we are not a political organization. We are an occult organization. We are working behind the scenes to manipulate the way that people think. The war that we are waging is a guerrilla war on the human mind. And we use musical frequencies, the dominant frequency, which I've referred to before, and symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. You know what he just said? We're using music to appeal to your animal instinct inside you to get you to follow the devil. That's what he said. I'll tell it to you in plain English. He said he's trying to awake dormant instinct. That's your animal basic fallen nature that responds to sin. You have that in you. I have it in me. Daniel was up there a minute ago and he said, uh, we're all sinners. That's exactly right. We have an old nature in us that responds towards sin and likes sin. But our new nature hates sin and don't want to sin. That's why the Bible said walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We are in a war every day of our lives. In this generation, you have to fight. You have to stand. You have to live. Now watch it tonight. Symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. What we're waging is, is that a dark right eye? Dark right eye? Is that uh, something? In music and literature, utilizing the media against... People don't even know each other. Music because of that.
Noah's Ark, man, man, right out. Young people, man, right out. Look at that. We're doing propaganda directly to awaken the wolf in man. We are in control and symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. Politics is merely the puppet show of human beings, and we transcend that. But we are interested in the control of human beings for our own purposes. We are in control, and the wolf represents the beast in man. That's what we seek to unleash in human beings. It's been repressed and tamed by Judeo-Christian values, and that above all is what we seek to eradicate. The wolf should be. He said Judeo-Christian values above all is what we seek to eradicate. He said the biggest enemy we've got Christianity and the Bible. And the whole world's getting like that. You know the biggest enemy the environmental movement has is the Bible. They hate it. And because we don't believe in climate change. We believe what God said. Well, on earth's here, there'll be summer, winter, spring, and fall. We, we might be having to have a couple of cold winters. No big deal. It's always been like that. Is anybody here believe in global warming that's seen what happened to Boston, Massachusetts this winter? <laughs> Lord, they ain't seen the ground in three or four months. Listen, I'm telling you tonight, it's a conspiracy to get this country and the world ready to accept the Antichrist. Destroying everything that Judeo-Christianity has succored and kept alive. We have no concern for the homeless particularly. We don't have any concern in helping people. As Adolf Hitler said, we seek to bring about a youth that has closed its heart to pity. Oh. Did you hear that? Said we quote Adolf Hitler, we seek to bring about a youth that has closed its heart to sympathy. Brother, we're seeing that. Amen. You see that? You, you see the junk they put on MTV and VH1? Well, I mean, you see the kids just walking up, just hitting old people on the side of the street, knocking them out. We are raising a generation that's closed its mind to sympathy. We don't care about nobody. We don't care who we hurt. We don't care. It's a wicked, wicked time. The Bible said in the last days it'd be without natural affection. I'm telling you, y'all, listen, if you, if, you, if you knew, if all you kids in here, if you knew how dangerous you're, the world you're living in is, if you knew, if you knew how bad the devil is out of you, and you'd feel this all ripped right now and bawl your eyes out and say, oh, God, help me. God, help me. I'm so glad I'm saved. I got saved when I was 18. I've been preaching since I was 19. I ain't looking for nothing else to join. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm not looking for a new religion, brother. I know in whom I have believed. I know it's right. I know it's real. And then thank God it'll do when I'm dying. <laughs> Hallelujah, this is real. You can sink your teeth into this, teenagers. You can believe Jesus. He's the one. We may have to die like those Christians on yonder in Iraq and Iran. They may cut our heads off before this is over. But I'm telling you one thing. We'll wake up and have a brand new body for our children. What? There are people in this world that would kill me right now if they could get to me for what I'm preaching. Come on. Yeah. I'm not trying to sound dramatic. I ain't out to no fight with nobody. I like peace. But it's true. Yep. I would die for what I believe here tonight if they could get to me. Amen. They hate Christians. Yep. And they'd kill every one of us if they had their way. They're not your friend, neither. That's right. The humanist values that Judeo-Christianity has encouraged, we want to wipe them out. It's led to democracy, social humanism, the idea of equality. All of this filth has to be wiped out. He called Christianity filth that has to be wiped out. There's your Illuminati sign, and the pyramid, and the one eye, like what's on the back of your dollar bill. The New World Order that George Bush Sr., used to talk about. There's a movie coming out called Ouija Board. Ouija. And it was talking about let the Ouija tell you what to do. You say, preacher, that's not real, is it? Oh, yeah. Demon spirits can get in there and speak to you. See that? See the one eye? Did you kill the people are being taught at the movies now. Yeah. 
jump. Watch it. Oh, I love it. I love those scary movies. I love it. You don't know what kind of spirit you're messing with. You don't know what kind of spirit you're messing with, boys. My heart is breaking for somebody here tonight, Brother Scott. My heart hurting for some of you young people. I beg you to get right. I beg you to get right. You're ruining your life. You're going to mess up. You're going to wind up in prison or even hell if you don't get right. Ouija, are you with me? Ouija, are you with me? Ouija, are you with me? With me. Dear Mr. Ouija, I want to know my future. A bloody murder. I want to know my future, a bloody murder. They want the Ouija board to tell his future. They're talking to the devil, asking him to help them. The devil's not there for you. Oh my, look at the pyramids and cartoons. The devil's also busy at work getting the little kids. See the old see and I, way back on the Mickey Mouse, on the bottom of the skateboard there. I have other videos where it's absolutely full of this stuff. Satanism, Antichrist, Illuminati, devil worship. See the old see and I with the pyramid there that lights up? That's no accident it keeps popping up in, in cartoons. You don't see them looking at the Bible. You don't see them praying to Jesus. If they have Jesus in them, it's something like South Park, and they make a joke out of it, and make, some, make it hold lightly. See the all C and I? It's universal. It's a brainwashing technique for our young people. And mama and daddy don't even realize it. They're all partying somewhere while the kids are at the babysitter. Now the devil is talking to the boys and girls. See the upside down devil worship sign. The pyramid. Sign of the baphonet. The antichrist. The one eye. The all seeing eye of Satan that's supposed to be on you. Nine, 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 friend. You think about that. can't get away from it. You can't escape it. It's everywhere. Why are they putting that in front of little kids? That's what little kids are being taught every Saturday morning. The sign of Satan. Hell curve. over and over and over. That can't be an accident. That can't be just coincidental that it keeps on and on and on and on and on. It can't be. There's something going on. There's a conspiracy taking place for the hearts and minds of our young people tonight. Boys and girls, you see it over and over. And about the time you think, well, it, it's harmless. It's just all fun and games. You see something that makes it even worse. And you realize that, the, that Satan, the God of this world, is in control of the media. Yep. Is in control of what our ears hear on the radio. What our eyes see on the television. And he's in control of this world. The Bible said he's the God of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, look at that mark of the beast there. Look at that in the right hand. Do you honestly think that's just an accident? That they would put a computer in a man's right hand on the Walt Disney Company? Where literally millions and millions of boys and girls grow up thinking it's normal, it's no big deal. Listen, when the Holy Ghost is gone and we're gone, 
There'll be strong delusion sent on this world. People will be begging for the mark. Yeah. They'll be begging. First in line, let me up there. But we see it goes on and on. I don't even have time to show you all the SpongeBob where, where they bow down and worship the all seeing eye. Where they bow, and some of them and worship the devil. See the one eye? That's a picture of just a little devil or a demon. The monster. The monster. Kind of strange, isn't it? Wow. Wow. Where are we at on God's calendar? As y'all see an eye, looks like that big sign for CBS, don't it? You know that? In the center of the pentagram. The pentagram is where the priest will stand in a satanic ritual to pull up power from hell and the devil. That's what a pentagram is. A pentagram is where Stevie Nicks used to stand and perform a Fleetwood Mac where the power would come from hell out of the center of the pentagram. Ladies and gentlemen, you see it all going into technology, even our hands and our mind going technological in our generation that we live in. See the one eye. See the all-seeing eye. It's everywhere. I'm not talking about some places. I'm talking about everywhere. Worshiping of owls. Why do you think owls are so popular right now? Owl jewelry. Owl necklaces. Owl earrings. We got all that Bible talks about the owl being an unclean bird. Now it's a picture of a demonic spirit. How did they picture demons in, in a lot of places we won't have time to go into tonight? But it's on and on and on and on and on. You see it in cartoons, even as the Lion King. And some of the ones that we think were so harmless over the years that we just thought and over and over stuff pops up and pops up and pops up and pops up and you think oh my goodness and a, there's a subliminal message you say well who would see that preacher I don't know but I know one thing there's something about getting stuff subliminal in your mind that does have an effect they, done it, they used to do it in theaters they would put subliminal messages on the screen like popcorn like drink drink and people would go eat it and you couldn't even see it on the screen. Tell something. We're getting ready for the devil to take over this world. You better get back in church. You better get back in the choir. You better get your life out of God. Because I'm telling you, you fix and mess up, buddy. You're fixing to mess up. Ladies and gentlemen, you're fixing to make a very big mistake if you leave God out of your life and you leave the Lord out. You're fixing to make a mistake that you may never, ever, 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 ever get over in this life or maybe even in the world to come if you get left behind when Jesus comes. I want you to look here tonight. See how close we are. Why would they do that? Showing the devil and Satan and horror and fire. With Satanism, witchcraft, or some, what is it, Ursula, some witch that's casting spells and, and using sorcery and demonism. Oh, pretty innocent, right? Oh, oh yeah? Look here at Beauty and the Beast. It's always a pretty girl loving an animal. Like Miley Cyrus. I want every woman where she goes. <coughs> Beauty and the beast. Sons of God. Daughters of men. Yep. Twilight. Yep. Where Edward is not a real human being, but a part devil, part man. Yep. Katy Perry, who sings I'm in love with an alien. I'm in love with him. He's not really a man. He's not really an animal. He's half and half. Satanic breed for the tribulation. You say, Brother Danny, that's in the 
days of Noah. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Yep. There's a lot more going on, you think. Why does it always show a girl with a, a beast? She feels sorry for him and falls in love with him. That's why zombies are so popular. That's why every movie that comes out of Hollywood has a zombie or a vampire in it. There's the one eye. That's where they get their advice from a book with one eye or the pentagram. The one eyed demon. Curses, hexes, and voodoo. It said, stand in the center of the pentagram. It's not an accident, people. How come we don't have to have a Bible study and learn about Jesus on the cross? Why do they stand in the center of a satanic pentagram conjuring up spirits? Look at that. Pray unto the devil. And the devil appears in the center of that pentagram. That's what happens to our young people today. Now my, God help us. That's all I can say tonight. God help us. <laughs> Hitler's children. Join the high Hitler sign, Donald Duck. Honored Hitler. Killed six million Jews. Hated God. Christians in the Bible. See the sixes? You can't miss them if you look. See the all seeing eye? Sometimes when we're making a video, and I said, I swear to Satan, if you don't, or Lucifer, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to do this and so. You don't believe it? Listen. And then, you know, oh, well, we can't get, you know, the, the frequency's weird, and, you know, it's sounding a little bit strange. And I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm going to. Uh, reportedly, Lady Gaga has been confirmed by multiple friends and managers. Someone has to sleep in the room with her, and she's tortured by demons. And, and, and I think she's falling around by ghosts. Well, yeah, you're telling little girls to worship the devil. Bad right. stuff's going to happen to you. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. admitting these things. They Amen. Think out there. People are just not taking it serious. Look at that. It's actual demon possession. You know that old girl, look what a wreck her life is. Honor and Satan.
Yeah. Buddy, I'm sick of this old world. Yeah. I'm glad we can have revival and have me. I wish the Lord is dead. Don't get us out of here. Take us on home. Hallelujah. He's coming one day. Yeah. Woo! I'm glad that he is. The only thing that breaks my heart is many of you. That's Bryce Heap on Imagine Dragon Songs come from demonic spirits. But Listen to this and read it. This ain't my opinion. Both be given to them late at night in their dreams. Imagine Dragon singers Dan Reynolds admitted, after dark, my lyrics are boring. A lot of lyrics I have written have come from dreams and, of course, nightmares. This also explains the title of their album, Night Visions. Dan Reynolds also gets the inspiration for his songs from the voices of the demonic spirits. After interviewing singer Dan Reynolds, David Dunn of Jam Magazine said, Dan Reynolds isn't ashamed to admit he hears things others cannot. He has haunted his every waking moment for years. He doesn't like to talk about it much, but the voices in his head have become constant companion. And when his inner mutes, you know what about that? You're mute. A mute. You know what? I was musing the firebird. Amusement, amuse, intermute, speaks. Reynolds is quick to take notes. This singer songwriter's hearing problem always ends with a cleverly crafted lyrical landscape that delicately balances out the sound, agitating his mind. Such is the price of genius. You want me to put it plain? Such is the price of demon possession. He doesn't like to talk about it much, but the voices in his head have become his content companion. Rihanna, you're going to hear Rihanna sing about uh, uh, the, uh, the monsters that live under her bed, demons at night, and the voices in her head. And then Eminem will take it. So, I get along with the voices inside of my head. I wanna let you down, but I am hell-bound to find a song for you. Don't go, girls. Don't go, girls. Maybe you'll be going to school, I don't know, maybe ride the school bus. Some of you mamas will get up, maybe the kids are off to school, you'll sit down, do your daily Bible reading. You'll be looking in here, find something in the Bible. Maybe you turn the radio on, and are going to get groceries, I don't know what you might be doing. On an average day, this whole world out there going to hell. Don't even want to hear it. God, listen, they don't give, them, give you the snap of their finger. Most of them for the Bible, for the church, for the gospel. I've had, I've had people say, if i got to change my lifestyle, I don't even want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. One of these days, it's going to happen like that right there. Gone. Gone. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. When the trumpet sounds, we're leaving this world. The Bible said the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. It won't matter what your little friends at school think about it then. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Yes, sir. You could die right then. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be in a car wreck? in which you were killed. I thought about that. I drove millions of miles, literally millions. I've had 10 cars and put 100,000 miles on them. That's a million miles. And I've done a lot more than that. And many a time, I've drove down the road at night thinking, what if somebody was to come get me head on? Here's what it would be like. This could happen. And will happen to somebody tonight. Look at this. Watch this guy. You don't get a second chance after you're dead. You don't go to purgatory. That's what it feels like. No time to pray. No 
time to say, wait, God, help me. God, forgive me. Gone. Watch it. say, preacher, you shouldn't show stuff like that. Listen, it happens every Sunday. It's happened since I've been up here preaching tonight. Yes, sir. They ought to put that on MTV. And work it! This is what happens when you drink and drive. This is what happens when you get out and show off in a car. Yep. Take your life. The heart. Yep. My Lord. No time to pray. It's too late! You've had your chance. You've died without God. You left this world. You didn't get saved by God's grace. Why not call you to hell? Say, no, God, let me out. No, God, I don't want to go here. No, God, I don't want to die. No, God, I don't want to live in hell. I don't want to burn.
be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Shall be saved. Not maybe. Shall be saved. Not might. Shall be saved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. You done what God wants you to do tonight?